Welcome everybody to episode 176 of Bloody Thumbs Podcast. I am your host, C- uh, I almost said CH Gorax, but 47 <laughs> here. <laughs> I'm so frazzled just with a long day of work today. It's It takes a toll on you. I start speaking in gibberish and tongue and strange tongues. You, you never know what you're going to get out of me, but as, <laughs> as always, my co-host extraordinaire joining me by my side, Mr. CH Gorag. How are we doing tonight? I am doing fantabulous, and uh, it has been a very long week. It has. And uh, looking forward to unwinding and decompressing. Looking forward to the weekend. Yes, indeed. Everybody's working for the weekend. Well, I, yeah, I've been working for the weekend, too. So I was just, we just had a little uh, discussion about my current, because I started working this week, so it was my current, my first week of actually working after taking like the month off, which is <laughs> flew by fast. Um <laughs> I'm, I, I'm I'm glad to be working again because I, I need I need some uh, <laughs> I need to pay bills. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 is definitely that will definitely be a good motivator for anyone who uh, wants to get a job. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm, basically, it's just us talking a little bit about it, and it was just telling Ch a little bit about kind of what I've been doing at the for the past couple of days, all this week, pretty much is what I've been doing, just training for learning the new new game I, I can't say what game i'm working on or what company i work for I, at least i think i can't uh, but to, for the sake of keeping my job i'll just i'll just say that I, i'm working for a mobile gaming company uh, a you can't of, tell us one thing a lot of speculations going on you know hazy rome and some of the bgb crew think i'm going to be the next kojima i don't know they, they, this is all speculation i, can't I think say. you're getting a little bit more respect than that <laughs> a little bit more than that, I think so. I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, all I can say, expect a commercial at the Super Bowl. That's all I can say. <laughs> I, 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 I think you can't answer one thing without um, completely honestly. Right. And that is, did they give you a Rocky montage for training? <laughs> yeah, I will say yes. We'll go with that. Where, where they have like uh, just like the. The ever encroaching like close ups of you like on like a, on a computer just like writing keystrokes and and just like sweat dripping down your forehead it's like I can do this, dude. You have no idea how much how tired I, I kind of am right now. I mean I'm I I'm running off of like two Red Bulls today, and I normally don't even drink Red Bulls. I, I miss breakfast because I was just I wanted to stay in bed. I usually wake up uh, at least an hour and a, an hour or an hour and a half before I actually start work because I. I take forever to get ready, uh, for the sake of the main factor is actually getting out, getting out of bed. So I stayed in bed a little longer than I should have, and I just ended up just getting dressed and not having time to get breakfast. But I, for the most part, I was able to run off of uh, some Red Bulls and some of the food catering they got at the they got at the job. So I'm not feeling I'm feeling pretty good, but I I I, I never felt so. Uh, exhausted just by sitting down and tapping on a on a screen on because we because we get laptops for for work and and iPads or i or Android devices depending on which ones we don't have so right a lot of it is just training on actually on actually how the game works and it just a lot of it involves just tapping because it's you know it's free to play it's a, it's that free to play model um, yeah. involved in this game as many other mobile games are these days so a lot it, a lot of it involves you. You know, waiting waiting a significant amount of time, and if you don't have like a certain item that speeds up the process, you usually just kind of put the game on hold for a while until you come back to it. So, mm-hmm. I, we, I've I mean I've progressed so, so much than the average player, and because we were really in the training process, we really are provided some of the the assets in order to do it. So we kind of at the same time we've, we're kind of getting the experience and getting more empathy for players to actually start off from the ground up and I can respect players more that actually level up without actually paying anything which is from what, mm-hmm. what we've been told it, is, it does happen 
And I was telling CH that, you know, there's people, some crazy, there's some people, I won't say crazy because they pay my salary. There's some people, they spend, they're, Lamborg- they're dedicated. They're dedicated. They spend like Lamborghini, uh, you know, type of money in this game. And mobile, I mean, the, it, it, it's insane because the mobile gaming uh, area has just exploded with, <laughs> And it's it's like the it's these free to play games, free entry anyway, uh, and then just like microtransactions being the the mainstay and the lifeblood. Yeah, and I I and I don't really have a I don't have a problem with that at all. For you know, kind of free to play games, then you either invest in time and energy into a, kind of the areas that you want, or you can buy it. The, where I have a problem with it is kind of like with uh, Halo Five, where it was like. Okay, it's a sixty dollar game, and there's also microtransactions and some other shadier things. But th- th- this is th- this uh, my, the mobile gaming market has exploded so much that you see huge actors, uh, and yeah. I don't mean like kind of like B movie. Uh, oh, you know, it's a free weekend. I, I can do this. It's it's like wow, no, these commercials have high production values with very large, like very huge named actors. Like what is it? Christoph Waltz was for a Clash of no, uh, with the Clash of Clans. Yeah, Clash of Clans. I've seen that commercial probably twice on the movie theater. They play it uh, before the movie starts uh, in my local theater. So that's that was a big one. That was a big one with Christoph Waltz. That's a, that's what gets the show. This shows you how big it is. You know, the, the and and he's a list. He won two Oscars. Yeah, yeah. I mean that, that's that's you know as as high as you can get at this point. I mean. Uh, in terms of the the pedigree of uh, of actor, getting get them getting him in these uh, in these commercials, and who and then you have uh, Mariah Carey for uh, uh, what a game of war? Yeah, Mariah Carey for Game of War, and I think I I haven't kept up because it's not something that I play personally, quote unquote. Um, yeah. I, I know it was Kate Upton at first, and then there was Mariah Carey. Yeah. And uh, I think that's what's going on. I think that's what's the current right now. But then we have Arnold uh, for the Mobile Strike game. Yeah, that 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 one looks really cool too. Just because you don't expect him to show up in in this, because he's <laughs> he he's completely into it. It's <laughs> like every everyone's standing at attention. It it looks like yeah, he was into really it. Hot. Yeah, he was like, oh, with well, the best defense is a good defense. Yeah, it's like, not. I want to say it was phoning in and Arnold never phones any any performance in. No, he puts everything into his acting for good or for worse. Strike. That was a good part. With the the, the best it. kill is overkill. <laughs> the best speed is over speed. <laughs> the watch the best watch is overwatch. I, I don't know who who's the better actor in their commercial, Arnold Schwarzenegger or uh, Christoph Waltz. <laughs> you know, they're gonna make like uh, like very serious, like British period piece commercials, where they'll have like uh, uh, Tilda Swinton or like Robert Downey Jr. in like a very like uh, traditional setting of like uh, 15th century England, and they'll just be talking to each other, and then suddenly it's like ding, ding, ding! Oh, cool, Candy Crush, nice. But yeah, that's 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 been beyond my my that's my whole week so far, being occupied with uh, a new job at mobile gaming company that's just very generous as I mentioned to CH before um, it's been it's been one hell of a week and uh, I'm very excited to see uh, where everything goes once I hit the floor it's still a very very early very built it's still it's a big company but it's still growing in terms of like the location they're at here so I'm very excited to see where that goes and uh, hopefully lead to better things well dude see, I am... you can only grow so much you can only grow so far you know well, I, I was, I'm telling you, man, uh, Hideo Kojima, he's he's looking for good talent right here, and uh, you, <laughs> you, you're going to be heading, uh, was it like the Snatcher remake? A Snatcher remake on iOS. Yeah, you're, you, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I got to say, he's looking for people of, uh, men of, of, uh, of true grit, so I think you'll definitely be on the short list for that. Absolutely, but um. Yeah, beyond that point, we'll just go ahead and move forward from here in terms yeah. of like kind of what I've been up to. Uh, well, for that, in that aspect, anyways, since this is the second week of January, we've already been on uh, just a, a random thing. Side note here: we got a Oscar nomination. Ch. 
Yeah, a lot, lots of uh, Oscar noms, uh, and apparently there's already controversy because uh, not not a lot of um, not a lot of the uh, nominations have been for uh, uh, people of color. Oh, that's that is that right? I hadn't uh, noticed. I only saw the top tier of this list, mainly mainly the best uh, picture nominees. I had not looked mm-hmm. too the in depth for this. Uh, is that so? That's was one of the big controversies here. Uh huh. Like Idris Elba in uh, Beast of No Nation. There was also Plus. I can't remember what his name was, but he played uh, one of the rappers in uh, Straight Outta Compton. And uh, a lot of people think that he was uh, the actor who played Ice Cube, and uh, who got snubbed. And it it, it was just no Sam Jackson for the Hateful Eight. No, no, no <laughs> Sam Jackson for the Hateful Eight. But I think I don't. I, like Sam Jackson seems to be like the guy where he he like he's so successful and he's been so awarded that he really doesn't care now. And I don't. I don't mean that negatively. Like, oh, I'm beyond this. It's like, if he wins, like, oh, that's cool. If he doesn't win, it's like, oh, that's cool. An actor like got the got the award, and I I I just absolutely love that. He's been yeah. He's been in so many movies, so many memorable movies, and he's had so many memorable moments that it's not that in and of itself is like a great career to have. I mean, usually maybe winning an Oscar at one point doesn't necessarily guarantee you success all the time because you know you can always drop off at a later point but it's just being in so many memorable movies like he's been it's going to really cement his exact his kind of movie credit and you know act and his legacy and, 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 and so to say Jurassic Park three of the Star Wars films he's been in Pulp Fiction the Deep Blue Sea the Ape by the Shark <laughs> they hate me a motherfucking <laughs> shark ate me <laughs> It, it, yes, they deserve to die, and I hope they burn in hell. <laughs> it's it's uh yeah, I mean that's the that's the kind of career you want to have. It's mm-hmm. it's uh it's quite a feat, it's uh, rich I must say, and challenging. Yeah, I'm actually uh I can't say I'm surprised, but I'm I'm very I know that the the, the two movies I believe from what I recall from the, like the perusing and quick glance I've seen, I, I was Revenant and Mad Max with the most nominees. Yeah, Mad. Uh, I was Mad surprised Max. for Mad Max, I, and I love and I enjoyed Mad Max. I, I I maybe have to see it again, but I I I wouldn't say it was for me. It was is that hot stuff, but I enjoyed it. I got to see it again. Maybe I'll change yeah. my mind. Yeah, it. Um, I think it's a really well made film, and yeah. it might actually be one of the best films of this year, just because I don't think it was a particularly strong year. Where we got a lot of good stuff, but it it's just it, it wasn't like that um, 2009 uh, year where it was just like a, everything else was a knockout, and then this this one is like okay, it's the kind of ones that you expect, and then Mad Max shows up. It's like yeah, I, I, listen, I I love the film, but I I didn't think it was like the best thing that I saw. It seems more just looking at this list right now. It seems that they're trying to diversify a lot of movies that you typically won't see on the the list for uh, movie pick best picture. It's like because The Martian, I would, I would I was surprised to see on here too. I mean, that, it was a really good movie too. I, I absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, the whole experience, just from beginning to end. Once you kind of it's such so a lot of uh, a lot of tension, a lot of a lot of uh, you get you get a lot of um, you're very invested. Uh, when, yeah, when you know, seeing Matt Damon trying to <laughs> Matt Damon, um, <laughs> Matt Damon, <laughs> trying to trying to get back to Earth, uh, as Will Smith <laughs> pronounced it once, that, well, at once Independence Day, very very perfectly. Uh, but yeah. yeah, that I mean, typically I don't, you don't normally see science. It was a more, it had some hints, uh, you know, partly sci-fi, um, but mostly as the Golden Globes would let us know, it's a comedy. <laughs> it's a comedy. It's what that uh, that that one like people were up in arms about just because like okay listen uh, I could understand Robert Downey Jr. being nominated for Best Actor for Tropic Thunder because that was a great performance yeah it, Martian it, it it was funny in parts but it, it it's like saying that Die Hard was a comedy uh, it's I, not I, really a comedy. Yeah, it's not not in terms of the that comedy category, but it, it's like 
it's it surprising this to for me to see it because I would say it, it, I'm not to put it down. I would say it was it's a step. It's certainly a step above a popcorn movie. It's a popcorn movie with a brain. Yeah. But I wouldn't necessarily put it in the best pictures. But that's just me. But I've seen mm-hmm. this one. I have not seen Spotlight or The Big Short or Brooklyn or uh, The Room. I've seen Bridge of Spies. I actually watched Bridge of Spies last night. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, as a, like like these other movies I mentioned, I I enjoyed Bridge of Spies for what it was. It was oh. a well. It was a pretty well made movie. Did not feel like a Spielberg movie to me. Uh, and I, it feels I did, like young Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and I didn't know till like I saw looked on IMDb it was co-written by the Coen brothers, and that yeah. which, which explains just how good you know kind of the dialogue was very important how good the dialogue was uh, I very much enjoyed that there's some very good character moments and and character dialogue that was in there it, it, for me it was fine for what it is it it, it seems like it's slightly Oscar baity maybe they just threw it in there because of Steven Spielberg's name is attached to it and you you can't. Tom Hanks is America's sweetheart. You can't. <laughs> that man could do no wrong. It it's hard not to have Tom Hanks in anything in that film not be considered uh, best picture material. Yeah, he's such a yeah, he's such a lovable guy. You can't. Uh, I, I enjoy everything he's in. Even he's, though I wouldn't consider the movie that to be hot stuff, but I he's always his performance is always great. Uh, I, I want, there's still a couple of other movies with him that I think he did with Spielberg that I have not seen. There's so many, so many other movies I can list off. But uh, Catch Me If You Can. Catch Me If You Can is good, and then uh, there's Save another Forever one. Run. Yeah, yeah, that's that's one of them too. It's it's, it's such a such a list, such a list. Um, uh, for me, anyways, I, I got to see this movie too uh, a few days ago, and, and the best way to see this is I, I don't say this often. And I know it's easy because a lot of people it's so accessible nowadays to watch movies at home. But The Revenant is the best is the movie to watch in the theater. Yeah. Oh it, yeah. It is probably, possibly the most gorgeous film I've ever seen. The, the cinematography is on point. It, everything looks so well shot. Every it, it reminds me also like what Metal Gear Solid Five did too. Is a lot. There was a lot of like these. Uh, continuous shots where you don't see much uh, any quick cuts or anything like that. I'm sure it's there, but you don't they disguise it right. You know that's the best way. That's the kind of best movie you can get. It's the ones that you don't notice the cuts. But there's it all seems very uh, free flowing. Like you're like you're a part of the action. It's like mm-hmm. you, even by by the beginning to end of this movie, you felt like you're on this journey <laughs> with Leonardo DiCaprio trying to survive getting attacked by bears, freezing ass weather. Uh. This almost is tangential, but uh, it, it kind of it, it kind of relates. Where I was, uh, people were talking about the Force Awakens, and I was I happened to be just rewatching uh, Gendy Tartakovsky's two uh, D Clone War series that he did uh, for Cartoon Network as kind of a tie in between uh, the Episode two and three prequel Star Wars films, which is honestly one of the best things to ever come out of the prequels one of the only good things to come out of the prequels um, and I, I that that show and just re-watching it, it just made me appreciate and love uh, actual cinematography movement uh, silence, because you know a lot of a lot of days, uh, you know, these movies will be just so chaotic and, and fast cuts and lots of dialogue and it and time to breathe and time to reflect, and just a, a slower pace actually really helps. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for The Revenant, just, just by looking at, uh, you know, like with Birdman, Birdman! Uh, <laughs> Attorney of Law. I was, I was really sad that, um, that the movie was not a, a live-action remake of the uh, Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law uh, Adult Swim uh, animated series. But it was still a good film regardless. Um, yeah. Where, where it, it, it's the concept of like capturing movement and everything in front of the camera have needing to have meaning or at least like needing to be uh, engaging rather than just like this maybe ancillary thing that they just put in because it's, it's kind of the rhythm of the, of the filmmaking. They say, no, you know, we're going to put everything in there that we need to tell the story. And in much like Metal Gear Solid five with the one of uh, the long takes, 
uh, it, it, the amount of focus and choreography that had to go in, not in just, um, it, not only with the blocking of the actors and how the camera would interact with all those things, but just kind of the dance together of, of trying to figure out how to make it all work is just something I find fascinating. Absolutely. It's even from the beginning, you're thrown into this, uh, it war zone. It starts off, you know, this, and he's attacking the the base that they're where Leonardo was at, and it's just from there it just got it came it went to the next level. It just I loved every minute of it, and it's like it, it, just those little touches where you know you see you start panning over certain certain actions that are going on in the scene, and then you see a guy fighting against a Native American, and then the, you know he. He, dr- he tries to drown him underwater, and the camera goes in underwater, and it's like, oh, <laughs> it's so intense. Uh, I get, I get, it's so immersive. It's just a lot going on. There's just a lot going on. And, take, and, and not a lot of movies, uh, especially a lot of popcorn movies, and, and even even games sometimes are not always the best with atmosphere, but this movie takes its time yeah. with setting up atmosphere very very much, even in, like, in the beginning, as we were mentioning, just from the titles, uh, the, kind of the intro title. Everything's kind of... Seeing the panning over on the uh, on the on the floor of the river and then the landscape and just uh, just uh, a lot of things going on and uh, mm-hmm. it takes its time to set it up and I I I, I want to see it again I've only seen it once but I, that's probably probably one of my favorite films of the year that's, that's a, that, I would put that up there it um the revenant uh, it, you know what I this is. All the all the best picture nominations are ones that I kind of expected, but they, they're up there for a reason. Like um, it, we're, we have the Revenant, we have uh, I, I have not seen Big Short, but apparently it's very very good. Uh, the Martian, I thought that was good. Mad Max, we already talked about. Yeah. Uh, Bridge of Spies, I I think this is maybe my favorite Spielberg film, um, really since maybe Munich, where. You know, this feels like you know Spielberg's back on point, and of course, written by the Coen Brothers. How can you not have great, you know, great dialogue? And that is, you know, great dialogue. And also, there are moments in that film where they're very darkly humorous, but not in in like a David Fincher overtly dark. Just like kind of the uh, uh, subverting kind of ideas, like when uh, Tom Hanks is trying to meet with like the Russian family. And they're like all overreacting and crying, and just like it's just enough to be believable, but also just enough to realize how ludicrous it is. Like, yeah, that's a Coen Brothers moment. Yeah, yeah, I felt, I certainly felt that uh, watching that scene. That one was <laughs> one of my highlights <laughs> of the film. It's just him reacting to them, them overreacting <laughs> when going over to the, I believe, the embassy uh, in Russia. Mm-hmm. And before that, him him kind of trying to get there as quick as possible because he got it. It was it was uh, in order to get directions or avoid <laughs> getting into more trouble or any physical harm done to him. He gave his gave his yeah, coat over to <laughs> to some hoodlums, the ruffians, the ruffians, the the sharks. He uh, he is he gives a great performance, and it also it it also really interestingly portrays kind of the dynamic at that time where it's like there was a huge set if you were communist back then you might as well have you know emerged from the fiery pits of hell and just like said booga 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 because you were a completely different person and (laughs) so much so that uh, the uh, it was like the uh, U2 pilot who down was hated because he didn't uh, get, take a suicide capsule to uh, to avoid capture, right? Uh, so to avoid possibly revealing any any intel he has, and even so, like it's like a double edged sword too. If he if he says anything or doesn't say anything, usually you know, depending on what the what the frame of mind Great is, play. it's it's like no, they can't they don't have a way to know if he did or not or believe him. And it's all through inference, and it's this very, this, like, a very sensitive game of of show and tell. Right. And uh, they, of course, they send this like lawyer who is just kind of wrangled into this entire situation, 
where you know at first he's like he's doing it because it's his job uh, to defend you know this communist guy and it, it, this communist alleged communist spy, and the, the, I mean the, it's like the court is a sham. The the entire case is like it, it, it's basically just like yeah this is a kangaroo court we're just gonna kill this guy as soon as possible, and it's just, and it just it really makes you it really makes him question his own legal system. It's like, wait a minute, I thought we were supposed to pride ourselves on being the better man. And it, that that play of political ideology and it, it, it just like the the subtleties of, uh, of of people trying to interact with each other and trying to find out their identities versus their national identities is very, very interesting. And I, I definitely think that they had a good job there uh, Trumbo, which was really good film too, uh, but I'm kind of sorry you didn't see it wasn't nominated for Best Picture. I thought The Imitation Game came out in 2015 uh, with Benedict Cumberbatch, and uh, I, I gotta say if that, that I, but I looked at it was apparently 2014. I don't know if that was because it was released in some places first and then in mass audiences, or if it was just like one country and then the next, right? But uh, I, I don't remember this being nominated last year for anything, um, but it, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch gives one hell of a performance in that, and I and I love that uh, story. Uh, so I, I have not seen uh, no. I, you know what? I have seen one of the other uh, films of be- best picture category, which is The Room with uh, Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. I was yeah. gonna. He, he beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I, I read the nominations. And I did not because it's, it's. You can read them like multiple sites as you, as you may know. We're reporting on this. If you don't, if you don't go on the Oscars website, they don't provide you like the poster of the movie. I could have sworn that they were talking about Tommy Wiseau's The Room, the infamous <laughs> Room. I. Uh, you know what? And they would not be wrong to give it to <laughs> give Best Picture to Tommy Wiseau. It's like, listen, you made one of the greatest comedies of all time. You, uh, you, 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 this will go up alongside, like His Girl Friday, Dumb and Dumber, Annie Hall. It, d- d- just like th- this is this is so good that it it, it 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 like breaches boundaries of like you don't need to speak English to understand just like how weird this film is. Absolutely. Hey, doggy. So what? So what? what? <laughs> So so, what can you say about the room, or just or room, or just room? Oh no no, I, I was talking about Tommy Wiseau in the room. In the uh, room. but I've I've not seen Room, uh, Spotlight. That one was uh, that one in Brooklyn. I I've, I saw I actually saw Brooklyn and I, I liked it. It was a well made film, but it's one of those well made films where you're like yeah, I I, I th- this is not really doing anything for me. As opposed to say something like Bridge of Spies, or even something like The Martian, where it's like okay, like for The Martian, they're doing a lot of scientific terms and they're trying to make this kind of dry material uh, be very interesting and human. Where you know, I say, like, oh, that's very, very, that's a in- incredible way to do it, especially with how many times they mention uh, Fonzie from Happy Days. <laughs> that's so many, um, so much Happy Days reference that I couldn't even, I couldn't even comprehend. I, I couldn't understand. There's so many, so much happy days. I was so <laughs> elated. And, and it's also an ensemble film where you really do get like everything. You get an omniscient presence of every single character, like Chiwetel Ejiofor or Donald Glover or Kristen Wiig or Jeff Bridges. You switch between all these different characters, and and of course Matt Damon. And, and it's like dealing with all these very interesting dynamics of. You know the crew, the, the, their desire. They they gotta decide whether they want to like slingshot back to Mars, which may not work, or uh, head home because it's still, it's gonna be like another two year journey. Or uh, and like a, on the ground at NASA, they think he's uh, they think Matt Damon's character is dead, and then they have to deal with the fallout of him uh, being. Uh, being alive, or like, there's another subplot of like, okay, maybe the Chinese can help us, but the political fallout's pretty tenable because our our governments really aren't seeing eye to eye right now. And so it's the thing is like, they don't try to just make the survival the interesting part; they make the survival and all the things around it interesting. And was it okay? I 
I, it was Sean Bean who was in the movie, right? Sean Bean, yes. And with with a great Lord of the Rings reference, which is just who? Thumbs up. One of the one of the few movies where he didn't die. <laughs> I was I was just waiting for that moment where you I know I was waiting uh, for Jeff Daniels to stab him in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was waiting for him to just like. See, uh, I don't know, like a, a like a capsule touchdown, and everyone's like clapping and cheering, and then he gets hit like through the head with like a piece of metal debris. It's like, <laughs> and then he died. <laughs> you see it in the the end credits with the little info <laughs> at the end with the credits rolling. <laughs> it was like like uh, Sean Bean's character. Like as soon as it cuts to black, it's like Sean Bean's character died two minutes after the scene <laughs> from a heart attack. Yeah, it's very surprising. He he survived, but. He... Yeah, I mean that, that that one was very enjoyable. Just what you said, very much of an ensemble piece. One wouldn't work without the other. Just a lot of moving parts going on, and even even in some of the the subject matter and topics they went about discussing in the film. Just more more than the Survivor movie. It's just there's all the other moving parts uh, going on right there. So mm-hmm. I have not seen Steve Jobs, but I just wanted to quickly scope over here on the uh, actor in leading role or maybe the actress in leading yeah. roles. I got to see the Danish girl too uh, as well a few days ago. Shouldn't that be best actress? Eddie Redmayne as it's best actress. So trans- more, trans- so transformative that he's uh, went into the actress category. <laughs> wait, a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you saying that wasn't um, um, uh, um, um, Mara Kate? <laughs> Kate Mara. <laughs> Kate Mara. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, she does, oh, so did, close to to that joke. He does look like Kate Mara. Yeah, I did. And, and it was... Yeah, Eddie Redmayne, he's... Boy, he is just plugging away. He's, he's uh, you know, between him, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Christoph Waltz, just, like, gunning for, like, the big... Hit, them and Christian Bale. Like, they need to, like, have an entire year of just, like, okay, Christian Bale lost, like, 80 pounds... Uh, Christoph Waltz is playing another charismatic German. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio has literally secluded himself in a submarine at the bottom of the sea to f- and filmed it. And uh, Eddie Redmayne has now transformed himself into part man, part iguana. It's like, like who will win this year for best actor? Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah, I liked the movie for what it was. It, it was very interesting. Uh, just going into the into the effects of uh, his character. You know, having uh, practically kind of like another identity, um, and it, it, it really, really, the movie emphasizes a lot on uh, also Alicia Vikander's performance because without her performance and just seeing her how seeing yeah. her how she views a Redmayne transforming into pretty much kind of like much like herself in a way, and that's kind of maybe the reason why yeah. they got along so well mm. in in a sense. And, and she's she's great too. She's been in like. Three three movies I enjoyed this year: Ex Machina, and this movie, and and then and the Man from Uncle. She's she's had one. She's had a hell of a year. <laughs> yeah, she 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 pulled a Robert Downey Jr. She she had like three really big movies, uh, like when uh, he had Iron Man, Sherlock Holmes, and Tropic Thunder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't. I, can't, I I'm just surprised she's just just come out of left field here, and it, a lot of. Well, a lot of what goes in, you know, really relies on her performance as well. I I had not seen the other movies in with for the actress leading nominees, so I can't say what how the performances are for for them. Um, but I I would give it to I would give it to her on for like the on the actress side in a, in a supporting role, uh, not the leading actually, but uh, very much so. Uh, heavily reliance on on her performance. Uh, that movie. Sierra Ronan was really good in Brooklyn. I, I, I would say she's a she's a great uh, leading lady. I mean, she's she's proven herself with Atonement, with Hannah, with uh, uh, the uh, damn it. I, I I get it. Like the the exotic Marigold Hotel mixed up with the Grand Buda, Budapest Motel. Yeah, you mix those up really easily. <laughs> the best damn grand exalted golden Budapest motel hotel California <laughs> and it's uh, uh she's really good in it uh Jennifer Lawrence and, and Joy I haven't seen that film but I don't remember people really raving about her 
you know, with the Silver Lining play, uh, Silver Linings playbook, they were just like, yeah, that, that that she's amazing, she's a tour de force, and this one it's like, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I hadn't seen Joe. I haven't seen Joe either, and it's I, I I really don't know what to make of it. Just the marketing for itself is so obscure, and uh, I can I can respect it, but I can also not necessarily feel too excited to see it because I really don't know what it, what it's really about, other than just kind of seems like. From the trailer, from what I recall, just it seemed like a whole lot of random scenes taken out of context, and none of them making really any sense with the overall kind of scope of the, what the movie's going for. Yeah, it's. I mean, and th- that's the thing with like a David O. Russell film. It's either going to be like really, really good or really, really mediocre, or confusing, and disappointing. Yeah, he's uh, he's hit and miss. He, he's hit very hit and miss. I know. I remember. I, I remember really liking Three Kings. That mm-hmm. one was enjoyable. And then I know he was gonna, he was he was on point to direct uh, Uncharted, and then that kind of fell through. As much a lot of like the video games and movies do. I am so glad and he did not <laughs> he did not go through with that. I, I I know he had the best of intentions, but he was like he was talking about it's like Nathan Drake's like oh we're, we got his brothers and it's his, and it's his uncle and his family there. It's like I like this is a family adventure. It's like um. I don't think you played the game. Like, wasn't the, the, there a book? Wasn't there like a, a script or choices of actors at one point where it was like you know, like you mentioned, it had a very Mark much Walbert. of a fi- family dynamic. Yeah, and yeah. then w- wasn't like Danny Robert, DeVito, Robert, I think was on the list. I thought like Robert De Niro, or Al Pacino was involved or something. It 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 was like okay, you you have not played the games. Because, like, they're just now getting into Nathan Drake's brother, and it's like, okay, they kind of left on an ambiguous note. And this is like, oh, yeah, family adventure, fun, action adventure. It's like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> I think we need uh, another generation to go by before uh, we start getting that really good video game film. Mm-hmm. And I see Kate Blanchett here uh, for Carol. She's going to end up... Ending up being like the Meryl Streep now for the Oscars, <laughs> being, being nominated here. It you know she's gonna probably. I hope she does have that Meryl Streep award thing going on where it's just like, listen, I I didn't even try for this one. You guys, I don't even know why you're doing this. <laughs> right. So we'll have to see how everything goes. Just kind of just kind of perusing a little bit through what's going on over here. Uh, Sylvester Stallone in Creed. That one, I'm, that one, I'm very surprised about too. Uh, you know, I've mm-hmm. heard nothing but good things about his performance. It, it's really weird because he kind of his best tour de force performances as of late. Where you know it's kind of like Jean Claude Van Damme coming for uh, back for JCVD, I love where he comes back for Rambo and for uh, Rocky, and now for uh, Creed. Where he's playing his kind of old, tired uh, versions of his characters, or at least like wizened, and they're a lot. They're so interesting now. Where you know he's actually a you know he showcased that he yeah he's actually a really good actor, and he can actually show subtlety and like depth and and, and emotionality, and he can and he has great chemistry with uh, Michael B. Jordan, and yeah you know, I, I was just really I I didn't think we would ever get another nomination for acting for Sylvester Stallone in any category uh, uh, you know if, I, I thought his time was past but wow good on him I'm really happy for him yeah very good on him uh, animated feature films I had not really partake, partaken too much uh, in terms of viewing mm-hmm. I see Inside Out I heard nothing but good things about Inside uh, that Out that was a really good one and I Shaun the Sheep I love, I love me some Shaun the Sheep I like that TV show I like the some Moss and Grummet <laughs> So I want to see that one. They they really uh, made sure that uh, it, it, Wallace and Gromit, that studio, kind of spearheaded the kind of like the British animation movement, and now kind of Shaun the Sheep is their next big uh, next big thing as as their next champion film. And I would I would love to see more British animation come on by because we had a uh, flushed away and uh, uh, what was it what, was Chicken Run. Uh, the, the, a British film, Chicken Run, I believe, was done by the same studio as uh, 
well, some Grumman. So they, they're, it's primarily, I think they're based off of, yeah, somewhere in, in the UK. Mm. What well, they, uh, they, they didn't give any love to the Peanuts movie. I is, love the Peanuts movie. Oh my god, dude! I they that that animation style alone should have been nominated for something like visual effects or or something because they they got that perfect blend of three D and two D because they could have just they could have been freaking lazy and just gone the way of like uh, Doctor Seuss. Uh, uh, Doctor Seuss is um, uh, Horton Hears a Who and just like made them all three D character models. But like they they decided to really work on this and actually make them these two D three D models. Yeah, they really went above and beyond just to have it stand out, and rather than just your typical standard fare of like three D generated uh, models of of these characters, it really worked so well. I uh, it just brought me back to the days where you know I would watch Charlie Brown and all those the Christmas specials and Thanksgiving specials and. It brought it was very it was very well done. Uh, even for people, even for younger kids, like then I maybe I've never heard of Charlie Brown before. Uh, I can really, they really probably would enjoy it and get into it. Do ki- do kids not know who Charlie Brown is? You'd be I surprised. I think it'd be like like Star Wars, where it just like it's such a national identity that that that, that they that they, they should know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is just my speculation. This is just me. I I wouldn't know. I don't have any kids, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it 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 was uh yeah really it was such a such a great movie. I really enjoyed that. Mm. Uh, I also saw. I don't know if this came out this year. I I know it released this year, but it came out probably like last year, I believe, or a few years ago. Usually, depending the foreign films sometimes take a little bit to come out here in the states. But I, I it was a Studio Ghibli film. Uh, I, I really. Probably, I'm surprised it's not on here. Maybe because of the year. I don't know what the technical, the technical aspects are. But I saw that the the tale of Princess Kaguya. That one. Oh. Was okay. Very, very. That was a very excellent Studio Ghibli film. It was also very done very well in terms of the aesthetics. We talked about how the Peanuts, you know, did did went above and beyond to stand out in terms of its uh, presentation. This one as well. Uh, stood out the most because it was very much uh, less minim- less detailed than your Studio Ghibli fair, which you know, like any any kind of Miyazaki movie, was very well, you know, detailed and very colorful. Mm-hmm. This one's very colorful as well, but it very it's kind of very minimalistic. Not none of the like the none of the characters are drawn out like very well detailed, like you know, it, almost like like in any way. It's more I would describe it as kind of more of a, like a sketchy kind of watercolor kind of looking. I, it's hard for me to describe, but if you see the, if you see artwork for it, it's very much uh, I would I would put it more of like it's very minimalistic, so to say, and that one was what kind of stood out the most. I'm uh, I'm looking it up. What what was it called again? It was the Tale of Princess Kaguya. You're gonna go K A G U Y A. So if you see some stills there, it's a very different art style than you normally see. Yeah. It looks like watercolor. Yeah, very much kind of watercolor, kind of sketchy, kind of sketchbook like, uh, with some color there. Yeah, very much, very different. Uh, it was a, it was a great movie with some great, uh, great dubs in there. A lot of these uh, Studio Ghibli films always get some top notch, uh, well known uh, actors for the for the voices. They got James Caan in here and J- James Caan. Wow, James uh, Caan does a voice in here and. James Marston. James Marston. Oliver Platt, John Cho, Chloe Grace Moretz. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would put it on the list. Uh, it was a very well-made film. Very, 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 very sweet film. I would no, put it up there. You are absolutely right. Studio Ghibli never skips out on uh, on on uh, great, not, uh, not on guess, great animation. Yeah. And, and also great dubs. Yeah, dubs. Uh, the dubs are always on, on par there. Uh was yeah. it Patrick Stewart and Alfred Molina in uh, Steam Boy? Um, that one that, I'm not I know sure. that that's not Studio Ghibli, but it just you know, it just like I, I like the fact that they're not just finding you know the low like the C rate uh, voiceover talent. Like I, I like Steve Blum not voicing eight characters. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's not your typical kind of below the notch of like 
acceptable kind of performances there. It's, it's all very top notch, very well, very well done. Uh, sliding over to the cinematography, we have uh, we have Carol. It's got to go for the Revenant. Revenant, absolutely, I would say so myself. I, I would put it in the, a clo- I would put the Sicario as a very you know runner up. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Sicario had great cinematography, especially over the like the the, the the very large panning landscapes that they do when they when they transition to like uh, maybe another location or another scene. Those were really well done, and especially the part where under on the rooftop, that one was very well done. A lot of oh yeah, a lot of things going on with the the cinematography nowadays. They're always stepping it up with these some of these movies that always with the natural lighting really makes it stand out and <clears throat> much more memorable. I know that I know most of it was like. Very much done with natural lighting, so if they didn't get the shot right, yeah, I gotta wait till the, probably the next day that I could try it again. <laughs> gotta wait, gotta wait till next month. That's the only time the clouds will clear. the the sh- The shot of the plane going over the mountains, and the, it just they have a way of 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 shooting locations and movement to appear sinister, even though nothing is going on. Oh yeah, yeah. You can't imagine how like how tension filled that that part felt when they were like going to they were going to Mexico and Emily Blunt's character thought they were going to, like El Paso and you, yeah. you, this <laughs> ominous music playing in the background as like you, you see like you're kind of I guess you're in like the the plane yeah like you're on the plane like kind of the plane view of hovering mm-hmm. over like you know what going over the border and seeing the landscape of Mexico just it's all well done. So well done. That, that was a top. That's like a very close second. Uh, but the Revenant, you know, from beginning to end, is very much uh, all about atmosphere, uh, and, and it couldn't have been accomplished with just the amazing uh, feat that they've that they've presented to us with just the cinematography in and of itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can't say too. I'm trying to remember from what I recall seeing, but the, the Hateful Eight cinematography was pretty, pretty well, pretty good. As well, mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's hard to really compare it or kind of say it's kind of any any better than well, it's a different kind of well done cinematography because a lot of it takes place indoors. Yeah, and it's especially in the beginning, it's very much a had, there's a couple of good uses of the the wide angle lenses, uh, especially when seeing it in seventy millimeter. In glory, lot, seventy millimeter. And a lot of these. Uh, Panning shots of uh, the landscapes, and especially in the beginning. Uh, th- did you get to see the Hateful Eight yet, Ch? I am. I am going to see it, but uh, I, I, I am very, very positive about what I've seen so far. Yeah, all, all I'll say is is that there's some. As always, Sam Jackson is great in it. Um, <laughs> Kurt Russell is very, very fantastic in it. He's like my favorite character in the movie. Even mm-hmm. though he does some despicable things, but there's a, he was he was great in it. A lot of chew, a, lot, a lot of scenes chewed <laughs> beyond belief. He, he's got a John Wayne impression, apparently. Yeah, pretty much. He kind of has some of the mannerisms of John Wayne. In the I movie. like the fact that Walton Goggins is is in the film, and I, it, I I feel like maybe this is Tarantino's apology. I'd like to think that this is Tarantino's apology for. Django, where he didn't really get to do much except be a threatening hillbilly again. Yeah, he Walton Goggins is is very much uh, very near the top as well. He's very much a highlight uh, of that movie too. He's very, he's very oh, good, great. very good in it. Very very funny, and he was he was great and, and justified too. So he's, he's glad to see him. Oh uh, man, I got I gotta watch that series. Yeah, I I didn't finish it. I I kind of lost I lost I lost out on catching up. I only saw maybe the first three seasons of it, but it was, it was a very fantastic show. I, I would like to end up probably rewatching because I don't remember a good a good amount of what I've seen so far to really progress and continue where I left off. But mm-hmm. he was very good in that show as well, and good to see him getting getting some high praise and in such a such a presence on screen, especially mm-hmm. in the Hateful Eight. You know what's what some people got really angry about that um, is very telling about the Oscars is that Fifty Shades of Grey has more Oscar nominations than uh, Beasts of No Nation. <laughs> well, you know, 
Because it, 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 it's this really weird... Uh, I mean, it's like, what do you consider a theatrical film? Is like... Um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember uh, uh, Spike Lee's uh, new movie. Uh, shoot, oh, oh, Chirac. Where, you know, that was released... Uh, that was intended to be released for theaters as well as for Amazon uh, streaming. Right. And so, like, does that count as a as a theatrical film to be nominated? Or like, what about Netflix's uh, *Beast of No Nation*? Uh, primarily, that was intended for uh, Netflix watchers. So, does that mean that uh, when it's shipped, uh, I think that apparently like a couple of theaters were showing it, but it wasn't nationwide. And so, it, it's just this very interesting play of. And maybe I have a sneaking suspicion that they might not have done it because they want to focus on traditional studio-based uh, films, you know, to actually get people's butts in seats in theaters to, to, you know, focus on that. So maybe it's politically moved. Yeah, that, that may be it for sure. It, uh, that, that that mentality and that those requirements will definitely have to change as time goes on, especially with how big Netflix is and just so much accessibility that you have with uh, a lot of people either seeing your show or movie whether it it be not as good or even hell even relying on the Nielsen reports on TV shows a lot of it is not truly accurate you get really the most beneficial and accurate representation of who's watching your show is just you know through Netflix mm -hmm. so a lot of it has to that a lot of it has to kind of correlate and update with the times uh, I know that they're very traditional there at the Oscars a lot of a lot of the old schools don't understand the Netflix. You know, no, they, as time they, goes on, you know, we get those new generations that kind of they got they understand what it's all about. Absolutely, and it's even it, it's even I think it's even more apparent now than ever because it's not like Netflix is a new thing and they're ignoring it. Netflix is an, is an established institution now, where they have their own originals. I mean, like Daredevil was one of the best shows of. Uh, twenty was was it released twenty fifteen or twenty fourteen? Twenty, yeah, twenty fifteen, I believe, if I'm not but mistaken. That and Jessica Jones, there were huge House of Cards. Uh, now they got Beast of No Nation, and now they're at, at, and of course the Oscar caliber Ridiculous Six. I was uh, gonna say, where's where's <laughs> they got the snub? <laughs> the Adam, Adam Sandler, best uh, best actor. Just waiting for <laughs> Rob Schneider to, to get his, his his first Oscar. Oh man, did, did, hit him with the donkey. That was great. Jesus. They uh I can't believe I watched that fucking movie. I was I was just I, I was wanted with... to, I, I wanted to watch it just for the sake of uh the story just to kind of see what the hell it's all about. It's just like watching a train wreck. I I, I can't look away. I I need to I need to see it. it. I mean, you already got Netflix, so you're not exactly giving him more money by watching it. And it it is uh, terrible. It's it, my my, uh, my brother in law and I were just uh, just sitting in the ca on a couch in Easton, Maryland, and you know waiting for uh, uh, waiting for the family to get back from shopping, and we were just sitting here just watching it, and we were just like, dude, I I can't not watch this because it is so fascinating on how bad it is. Ter man. You, I know you're better than this. You're on Brooklyn Nine Nine. You don't need to do this. And isn't that movie like two hours long? Yeah. <laughs> then it, it, it should be. Oh, whoever whoever was the fucking editor on that movie just needs to get fired or beaten because, like, dude, this is like th this is okay. First off, it's two hours too long, but it's also uh, like it's like thirty minutes too long. They go on. Tangents and 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 one-liners and jokes that have absolutely no payoff. Owen Wilson, oh god, I, I no no no, I'm sorry, no, no no. Owen Wilson has a career. Luke Wilson does not, and poor, he's in the poor film. Luke, poor Luke Wilson. Oh my, it, it's uh, he's always it, been my favorite Wilson. Yeah, he he was the one who was just like, okay, this guy could be like a really he could like pull a John John C. Riley. And be like a really good, serious, dramatic actor with comedic chops, and then who's always in demand because like he's good for everything, and they just never evolved. He's been in some really good movies too. Like he could, he's not, he's no, sh uh, you know, 
schmuck kind of like leaning on the coattails of Adam Sandler, like you know, what kind of like what the careers have gone for, like Rob Schneider and like David Spade. He's Jeez. you know, he's like idiocracy and and, and uh, my favorite old school, uh, old school, old school idiocracy. Idiocracy kind of might be uh, the American Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where just like look how ridiculous things are than we just actually think they're not. And Can Jorge Garcia from Lost Fame in here. Yep, yeah, he's uh, Hurley's. Hurley's no longer my favorite character on Lost. Oh, poor Hurley. He, he um, he is just terrible. I am. So sad that I had that I had that yet yeah, that he's humiliating himself in this because he was like in a couple of really well received TV series that just didn't really have a whole lot of life to him. So it's just like now he's slumming it with Adam Sandler. It's like I, I I'm I'm so sad. Why? Why do bad things happen to good people? Uh, Steve's on. I see in the list here. Yeah, I I I don't know. For some reason, I'm not surprised. Like with, with Steve Zahn, this you know he he did Rescue Dawn and uh, Saving Silverman, of course. Oh, that's so, a classic. Uh, uh, absolutely, that's and I kind of thought he he had that Alan Tudyk signed a kind of uh, acting mentality where he could do anything in that, and then just he stopped doing that like at, at about like two thousand five, two thousand six, and then we're just like waiting, like okay, so what are you gonna do next? And then nothing came of it. And I see. I see here John Lovitz. Skip it. John Lovitz. I, he's got he's had some good moments in some of the Adam Sandler movies. When? Uh little Nikki, I thought it was Shut the hell up and go <laughs> to the next person. Uh Danny Trejo is in here. Okay, yeah. I, Danny Trejo, he does anything. Sure, sure. I, I mean because he he can do like really great stuff. Like uh, like Breaking Bad, for instance, he was he was great in his role. Uh, uh, good, very good in Predators. He he's always that guy everyone loves to see, and he doesn't he doesn't really care what he does as long as he gets to do it. Because he's one of those guys. He's like Samuel Jackson. He's like Christopher Walken. He's like uh, I would say Al Pacino, but you know that's not really the case anymore. Oh, or like um, Nick Cage, where it, it, if they're free, they'll do it because they just want to do filmmaking. Sure, and, sure. I, it, honestly, I I should I shouldn't say this, but I I, I kind of want to see this movie. This this cast, all star cast right here. C- no, H. go ahead. <laughs> no, no, please go ahead and watch it. Poor, You'll it, love it. And the and the stand you will have so much fun. I will have fun watching it. In terms of just how bad it is, it, you know what? You should just you should, you should just like have a big, nice trilogy of great westerns where you have uh, oh my uh, Django Unchained, then you have True Grit, or like Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and then you end with this. It'll just it'll. It, I, I trust you. You will have such a wonderful appreciation for things yeah. after that. That'll just make me sad. Just how that's how low westerns can go. Like it, I, I know like, I know westerns are not certainly. A, not not the most uh, showcased kind of genre these days, but I, I've I've seen a couple. It seems like they're making a comeback a little bit. I, I felt like the, the Revenant has them hitting some western there, and what was the other movie I saw that was felt like a western? But there's like another upcoming movie I saw. I don't know if it's gonna be good. Oh, it seems um, slightly more action oriented, but like Natalie Portman and uh, Jane got a gun. Jane got a gun. That's uh, that's another western there that with hit with her <laughs> and. Uh, Joel Edgerton, which I absolutely have become uh, a, a new fan of, with some of the some of the previous work with um, the it's gift, great Gatsby. The, the gift, which is a really uh, under under look film, it was very good. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised it wasn't on this list here. Yeah, the get. I mean, did, yeah, I, lo- I love the fact that these uh, smaller films are like are. You know, getting a lot more attention now these days. It, they're, I, I like the fact that now they're scaling back and they're not. Maybe they learned from the studio crash back in uh, back in the heyday, where like you know that was the destruction of the first Hollywood, and now they're trying to realize like, okay, we got to scale it back, or at least we need to put out smaller, like mid-range movies where they're they're not overly expensive. They have good casts and scripts, and uh, you know they'll actually make their money back, and people will enjoy them. And they are—they don't need to be Star Wars: The Force Awakens in terms of how much money we spend on it. Mm-hmm. 
Well, to kind of uh, round about this, this this exceptional all-star cast for the Ridiculous Six, I see uh, Harvey Keitel and... <laughs> oh, God, Harvey Keitel. He, this, okay. The, one of one of the, the standard uh, Adam Sandler uh, go go to cast member for most of his films. He is like, dude, you were in freaking Reservoir Dogs. What are you doing here? <laughs> and it, it 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 gets worse and worse and worse until it, you know, as we've talked about, much like a. Um, a Lovecraftian horror story, you just go mad and just go with it. And and Taylor Lautner, it's like, listen, I, I didn't I don't think the kid is terribly good at acting yet. I think maybe there's like a spark if he just like if he if he takes that ember, like like in Dark Souls. If you just take that ember and just and just make a bonfire, you can unhollow yourself. But like he decides to go full undead. By by just in this film, he is he is the most embarrassing part of this movie, and I think it's because Adam Sandler wanted to be, you know, the cool hot guy or like the like the best looking guy in the entire cast of of protagonists, and he saw Taylor Lautner. It's like, uh, uh-uh, you're not you're not better than me. Here, have some buck teeth. You're gonna have a crazy accent, and you're gonna be the, like the most disgusting character out of the entirety of the cast. Uh, I mean, that's your standard formula for an Adam Sandler movie. He's always got to one up everybody in the cast. And the, it's I love the fact that he's not he's not even like okay, you know what? I'll do uh, like a Chris Pratt or a Paul Rudd where I'll get in like into crazy shape, and then like people will recognize me again. It's like no, I'm going to bring everyone down below my level. Yeah, even even like always his love interest is always someone very uh, out of his league, so to say. <laughs> Taylor Lautner go. Taylor Lautner go full retard. Taylor Taylor Rout Lautner goes beyond full retard. He go. He hits. He goes to hyperspace with that shit. He <laughs> he he he, go, he goes to he goes to ludicrous speed with how retarded he is in this film. And I don't mean like mentally retarded, as in respectable. Like actually, that's the definition. I mean just like full retard, unapologetically stupid. And he should be ashamed of that performance. Yeah, he's kind of like he's of, simple Jack. Simple Jack. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, he, he's kind of like a, a notch below Zach Efron because Zach Efron could, if he applies himself or he, even if he pick, picks the right role, he's been he's been on this like very much yeah, this on, the on this path of like the, the typical same character or same kind of genre of films. It's like if he applied himself more and, and picked the better roles than he's been he could, definitely can uh, do a lot more than what he's doing now with these just these s- same kind of comedy with neighbors and then this dirty grandpa movie with Robert De Niro of all people yeah he's uh, Zach Efron is one of the, he's one of those guys who much like I think Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio needs to get away from that pretty boy image by doing something very Either doing like really good, like a, a lot of good dramatic roles, or uh, really doing a, a character that's the very opposite of what he is, or or you know the guy not not what he is, but what the kind of guy he usually uh, plays. And right now, kind of everyone knows him as kind of the fun loving uh, dude, bro, frat guy, right? Who, you know, like Twenty One Jump Street or or Neighbors, and you know he just needs to. Get away with that, and also, uh, what was uh, the night before, which with um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and uh, Seth Rogen and Anthony Mackie? Uh, Anthony Mackie, you were on. You were good. Uh, you were on my list of like, oh man, you had a great comeback with uh, with um, uh, the Hurt Locker and uh, and with uh, Captain America, the uh, the Winter Soldier, and even a little bit of Age of Ultron. It's like, yeah, dude, you're welcome back in my my book. It's like, wow, after that one, I need to dock you several points and put you on and write a, a letter home to your parents because I I hated that movie. I I hate these types of movies where it's it's like semi ad libbing and with barely any. Okay, I I'm not going to get into this, but you know, just the, the night before, not that good of a movie, and maybe Zac Efron could. No, no, I'm sorry, that was Dave Franco. James Franco? No, no, James Franco's brothers. Isn't it? Isn't it Dave Franco? 
I have no idea. Okay, wow, <laughs> we were talking about Dave Franco the entire time. That's how that's how interchangeable Zac Efron is. I I and yeah, I, I was talking about Dave Franco, and I was thinking about Dave Franco who was in the night before. And oh my God, what what film has Zac Efron actually been in? We've been talking about Dave Franco this entire time. We are your friends, right? Is that the movie or is the name something like that? No, he, he was in. Oh my God, or he played. I'm a losing DJ. my mind. He was in Neighbors. Yes, and he was in that awkward moment. Ugh. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Bringing up Anthony Mackie reminds me of this uh, this very long this, this very obscure very long lost David O. Russell film that he never wanted out. It didn't even want his name on it. This this terrible rom com with I know Anthony Mackie was in it I think, and then Chris Evans was to lead it, and Jessica Biel was the love interest in this, this oh. rom com movie Gosh. where, where uh, Jessica Biel is some some has some kind of head injury, and every time she hits her head against something, she, her personality changes. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh Jesus! I, I okay now now I got now I got to look it up because that, that a, sounds so vaguely familiar. This is one of these law. This is one of these direct DVD movies that never got out. It was like David o. Russell wants no association with this movie at all. <laughs> it's, oh. it's, it's that bad. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but I will look it up. It may have David. been da- David O. Russell. Where you know, j- just because he wants to give the slight impression of it being the uh, Irish, it's not like O apostrophe Russell. It's O dot Russell. We'll be able to find it quick because he's only directed twelve movies. Was Ax- it? Ax- oh, it wasn't. It wasn't Chris Evans. It was. It was uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. So it was Jake Gyllenhaal oh, and Jessica Biel. Accidental oh. love. No. Accidental no, no. love, four he, stars. Uh, on MDB. You gotta it, watch this trailer. Every actor does uh, that crap movie that they all regret, and I, this is probably no. I'm also I'm very, I'm very Jake intri- Hall. I'm very intrigued by how this happened and how it gets made and and what happens in this process. It's much like the documentary that I'm so fascinated by, like the Death Super- the Superman Lives movie with. Oh, Nicholas Cage is Superman, and it never got made. And then there was this other the, the Chris Evans movie I was thinking I was playing it cool, Play, it, playing it the, cool with Michelle Monaghan. This is this poster is the most the most milk toast sta- <laughs> typical rom com poster right here. Playing it cool. Oh my! Okay. Oh my God! <laughs> this, this looks. This looks like the big, like the most not like this. Okay, you remember in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, where Chris Evans was playing um, the uh, it was like the Hollywood guy who was, who was like who was in everything, and and all the posters were like cheesy, over exaggerated uh, genre posters. This looks like one of them. Like th- this is like that character if he did uh, if he did a romantic comedy because it's like uh, Chris Evans like. Arms folded, like smile, like oh you, you're so you're so fun, and like uh, 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 Michelle Monaghan's like uh, dra- trying to drag him away by his tie and laughing. It's like ha ha ha, we're having fun, and oh my god, this is like okay. I think maybe an intern worked on this maybe five minutes. Yeah, that, them Photoshop skills, man, so oh. cheesy. <laughs> Tag says oh. the poster so cheesy. I could put a cracker. I put it on a cracker. <laughs> I, I think it would be too thin to put on a cracker. It might blow away. Yeah, accidental love. Uh, oh my! Put that I didn't on your realize list. it was 2015. Uh-huh. Oh, jeez, Louise, been, man. This may have been directed DVD. I, you know what? I, I am. Uh, this makes me angry at at Chris Evans because he said like he, he was he was very uh on, he was very uh angry at the Hollywood studio system because he's because he said. You know, I, I don't like these films. Like, there's a couple of, of of roles I really do like, and he said Captain America was one of them. Uh, Snowpiercer, he loved that role, and he just like you know, there's just not enough integrity there, and not enough like good roles anymore. So I'm gonna leave after a while, and then he makes shit like this. Oh God, it's like, it, it, did you like? There, there was one he did one with Anna Faris where I thought they were pretty good together, but like this just looks terrible. Well, he's playing it cool. He's playing it cool. It, 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 it's also the '90s font, where it's like, 
uh, like half of, half of the title is in one color and the other half is in another. <laughs> and it's the same. Oh my god! It's I need it's to see so, this. It's brilliant. Ab- Aubrey Plaza, Patrick. Oh, Patrick Warburton. What are they doing to this man? Yeah, oh, Topher, Topher Grace. <laughs> You're not surprised. I, I don't. I'm, I'm not really surprised for Topher Grace. Topher Luke, Grace Luke is... Wilson. <laughs> Oh, oh God! Yes, I'm. So, and that brings it back to ridiculous six. See how these movies all tie together. A six degrees of uh, of uh, of Adam Sandler. I need to see this movie. Initial DVD release was in Sweden. <laughs> oh, you you know it. it it's now going to be a uh, a a a Hollywood triple A blockbuster success after that. God, even these. Uh... Even these screenshots of the movie and Google Images, it's so, like these the typical standard fare of rom-com. Okay, this is how little anyone gives a shit about this movie, because the synopsis is like the back of the DVD box uh, general plot line, and there's no actual plot summary. A love struck just... man enters into a platonic relationship with a woman who is already engaged to someone else. And that's it. <laughs> it's like a fortune cookie. <laughs> Oh God! Oh God! This is wonderful. You have given me uh, uh, my early birthday present. <laughs> I need to write this down. Put it on the list of to watch. I'm already kind of going down the list of some um, award-winning nominee movies, and you know I'm gonna <laughs> put this in the middle to mix it up a little bit. Carol, nah, playing it cool. <laughs> playing it cool. <laughs> room, no. If you mean the room, then yes. <laughs> and look, executive producer Chris Evans. Oh, dude, what the hell are you doing? Did he read the script? It, apparently, I, I was about to say, maybe that he... Maybe he got it last minute. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, in, in the script, Chris Evans' character is named Me, M-E. I thought that was a, a typo at first. Like, oh, do, is that, like, short for something? Or, no, it's me. <laughs> and Michelle Monaghan plays her. And two writing credits in this movie. And they couldn't bo- be bothered to name the main characters besides me and her. I think... What does that say about the movie? Everyone I, I else got names. Like a mafia film. Like, the, you know, they had they had to, uh, to launder some money, and so they did it through playing it cool. <laughs> oh, my God. This wow. is beautiful. Wow, wow, wow. I will pay 50 bucks to see this movie five times in a row. Let's watch this on our own time, and we'll we'll report on this. I need okay, to see yeah. this movie. Okay, it's like Revenant, uh, excuse me, playing it cool is, is going on right now. I think you need to sit down. Is, it's it's so cool, you know, saying it. Playing it cool. Play it cool. You, you playing see, it cool. And you see Chris Evans, you may be at a disadvantage with his hot t- tie being pulled, but he's playing it cool. It is. Uh, did you did you write this film? Because <laughs> that sounds exactly what what they put on the tagline. This is like, this is some bad Photoshop right here. Look at this font. <laughs> this like Microsoft Paint font here. I can't. I can't tell, but it looks like that. Um, not only is the uh, uh, the it, the it is 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 photoshopped so badly that it's actually hovering over Chris Evans' head. But um, I think there's actually like a color correction problem with his forehead that no one decided to actually uh, change. Yeah, I see it here at, at, at the top left of his head, where it's it looks like it's like a, a dot of green and then like a, a shade of like red around it. Just, it. Looks like he has like the weirdest injury known to man. <laughs> like a oh my like a dude, there. why did you why did you do this? We got on this. We got on this just this thread of like bad movies here. Yeah. I don't know how we ended up here. Uh, well, we were talking about Adam Sandler and then Luke Wilson and Russ, but, David O. Russell. Well, oh, hey, and then... Well, Hateful late brought us to this point. Yeah, so... Uh, but yeah, late, man. Looking forward to it. 
Yeah, let me know what you think of it. We'll talk about it very soon. Yeah, prepare yeah, your yeah. butts and prepare your bladder. So it's uh, it's a quite a quite a long flip. It didn't it didn't feel long. That's how much I I was so into it. Just you know, always this your standard, very much uh, intriguing and very just immersive. You know, mm-hmm. You're always on. You're always paying attention with the dialogue. It always gets you. That's the Tarantino. Mm-hmm. That flavor with that dialogue, so it didn't feel as long as it as it was. So I was very surprised. Usually, I've you know I I like to drink a lot before I go to the mm-hmm. movies, and I've, I I I didn't notice I had to go pee until that movie ended. And I went rushing down the bathroom. <laughs> it's like you you don't want to leave, or else somebody might shoot you. It, it's so tense in the in the cabin. It's like well, who's that motherfucker standing up over there? Shoot him. <laughs> Beyond that point, that's kind of like a little bit of the rundown, quite a long rundown of like this these Oscar nominees. This has been good. It, it's like quite an indents conversation of uh, yeah. of movies here. Um, that's probably that's practically kind of what I've been up to besides work. Was kind of been watching these movies. I did get the chance to play a little bit of of Soma, a little bit more of that. I streamed I streamed uh, like three hours of. It. I didn't even know three hours went by because I was so immersed into the game. I was really trying to progress further into uh, getting getting more info. What's been going on in here, and it's uh, it's been it's picked up quite a lot now. I'm very much interested to see the outcome, and especially like the reveal of uh, the main character in terms of like uh, what's going on with him. Yeah, yeah, he, he's. Uh, I really like the fact that it is a single it's a narrative that is just a single cohesive element or you know it, it it should be where it's you know the idea of a single consciousness and how they expand upon that's very very well done yeah yeah it's 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 just all it's just all very very interesting i, I want to see more and, and play more it's but at the same time i'm terrified by it because I was trying to figure out how the patterns work for some of these monsters I encountered, especially going into one of these newer facilities. And in, in, uh, I, I always for, I always forget how to pronounce it. And uh, it starts with a T. In uh, Theta, that's the that's the way it's pronounced. In, in the Theta facility, when especially when you first get there, you're I believe I don't know if this was a glitch, but the monster itself that was there. Seems to only respond to sound. So I, at first, I was just hiding from it, so he won't see me at all. But it seems like he responds more to sound than, than than sight. So that had the advantage there. I had to break a window in order to get into a locked room that I couldn't unlock unless I went to an, uh, one area to unlock that door that was that wasn't uh, under the security code red. And I had no idea because it's one of those games too. Because you gotta remember, we're, we're kind of you, you kind of don't know where you're going half the time unless you have uh, like that was like the first introduction to actual map in the game. I mean, you can get kind of you kind of see a map of the area. You can walk up to it. Even then, I'm terrible with remembering anything. So I just kind of broke down the window. <laughs> the monster came running <laughs> towards me, and I jumped in the I jumped inside the room. He couldn't get me because there's there's no way to open it. The door is locked. Unless he had magical powers to open that door that was locked that I couldn't open, that's that's some that would be some BS. But I got lucky; it didn't happen. <laughs> they, they, uh, the monsters, for, even just from what I could see on the YouTube channel, they, uh, they're pretty crafty, and they'll, they'll mess up your day if uh, you give them an opportunity. Yeah, they're very, they're very a little bit more advanced than their in the previous uh, fictional games games mm-hmm. it's like Amnesia. They're they're. They actually are able to open doors, and it's you always got to be on the move a little bit, lose sight of them. Always you can't really be at one place all, at the whole time if they're after you, because they'll eventually end up finding you. And you don't have a lot, a whole lot of room to kind of um, maneuver them, because usually if they come straight at you, or you're kind of run into them, and in, in the process of like trying to run around them, it, it's not usually always it's going to end up well. You usually you'll get knocked down, or if you've already been knocked down. You'll get you hit get again, up again. And, you, and you'll die. Well, they're never gonna keep you down. <laughs> never gonna keep you down. I, I'm You're the that, best. Was that Chawamba Wamba? Manamana. I don't know. <laughs> do 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 do. Besides that, that's what I've been playing. That's so That's a quick overview. Um, nothing much for me, honestly. I've uh, played a little bit of um. Assassin's Creed Black Flag, trying to play a little bit more Undertale. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so it's like uh, very light on the games 
this week. Uh, one of the announcements, new, news well, announcements. I had to make room for uh, Adam Sandler. Yeah. Oh, that that time was wasted. <laughs> you you got to quit your job. You got to you, you got to just focus in a quiet, like uh, sound, uh, like Bose enclosed room, and just enjoy the 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 wonder that is Adam Sandler. Forget waterboarding. Forget any electric torture. What, being forced to sit in a chair, duct tape, and the eyelids. <laughs> I'm open. ready to leave now. The eyelids wide open, and then the marathon Adam Sandler movies is 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 a torture and punishment. I, I will never wish upon my worst enemy. Oh God, yeah, it is at ridiculous six. I'm not sure if it's the worst thing. Uh, Adam Sandler has ever done, but damn it, he is pushing it. He's always topping himself, you know. <laughs> he, well, at least at least to see that uh, you know it's like Adam Sandler's bad uh, acting has no limits. It's like it's the reverse Batman. Yeah. It's a Batman you wish would go away. Absolutely. Uh, one of the other quick announcements that I wanted to bring up uh, that I saw the other day was was the new Hitman game coming out in March. Oh, yeah. 11th, I believe, is going to be episodic. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm, I'm kind of mixed about it, but I, I, I'm very much excited for that collector's edition. You get that HR47 chess maker, chess master mm-hmm. statue. Uh, that I'm excited for. <laughs> I gotta have my Hitman fix. Anything Hitman, I'll buy. <laughs> it, it, uh, you know, after Absolution did not make all the money in the world, which was ridiculous. It didn't make a lot of, Yeah, I know Square Enix, was much like what we talked about. They were expecting too much, but it did make a good amount of money. It 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 they don't want a good amount of money. They want all the money all the time. And that that's that's a problem because you can't really do that and the big games are going to be the big games regardless of what you try to do. And it you know, Hit, Hitman isn't going to be like that because it's a stealth game. By that very nature, it's not going to be as intuitively satis- or like immediately satisfying as a Call of Duty. And you need to get used to that. And you need to get over that. Uh, and so I guess they're trying to do episodic gaming to, I don't know, test the waters or maybe try to do something else that's maybe more cost-effective for them or whatever. In any case, I'm glad to see that Hitman's coming back. I am too. I mean, I can't complain of. I can't complain for the fact that the we, that we've gotten some. I mean, this many Hitman games in the last few years. Because even before then, the, their their time of release usually at least a couple of years uh, between uh, a couple of years gaps between releases. And I'm, I was kind of very excited to see Four that they've, they've been yeah about that time. I'm very excited to see that they've been put, they, I mean, they've been putting them out and and the the quality has stayed very much high regardless of what you say about absolution which is what we we've talked about before it was it's very much like the double agent for for Splinter, uh, of the hitman series uh, yeah it, it's a it's still a really good game yeah very good game and try to do some different things try to tell more of a personal story you know much like splinter cell did with double agent as well mm. uh, i like that approach it was very much always been something i've always enjoyed about the hitman series it just which the hardcore fans like me always always cared about was was just the story and the more of the exploration of 47 as a as a as a human being being cloned and what that what that kind of a what do you what it really strives him what we we still much a very much a mystery because you know we've talked about it before with him him living inside this like he's got money he's living inside and he's got the hitman life he's living inside this like desolate, abandoned, like mm-hmm. <laughs> freaking warehouse <laughs> with a bird as, a, as his pet, as his only company, and he just has a whole shooting target range for himself. <laughs> it, blood money. It's a Spartan lifestyle, and and it's it just so interesting because like he really just is his profession, and seeing those small bits of humanity or like personality, very very interesting, and that's a very difficult character to write for. And yeah, that's why I give them all the credit in the world whenever they do that well. It, it, he very much is a, a tough character to, to write for, and, and it it shows with the movies. Or it's, it's, he's a t- even with okay, like, that the movies were just crap. The movies were crap, absolutely. It's but the games always they were always spot on, and uh, the quality of always pushing the boundaries of what they could do with the technology, and 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 even with the writing too. I mean. At the time, with Blood Money came out, it was just such a uh, Blood Money holds up. It still holds up very well, and it did a lot of 
a lot of great things that looking at it now may not seem that amazing but even like the new orleans level at the time it came out was such a big thing with so many npcs even though that they were all kind of maybe two or three of them were doing the same pattern and going in the same direction but even <laughs> then that amount of npcs on screen without any kind of the any kind of lag or any kind of drop in frames that was pretty amazing to me yeah that it that was a game that absolutely floored people back then, but also didn't just try to rely on uh, uh, on just like visual splendor uh, to get points. It actually tried to utilize that, and like the fact that you have so many NPCs means that you have to be in the New Orleans level. It's like okay, now there's so many witnesses, and I got I got to take things slow and easy, and uh, change into costumes, and like really uh, pay attention to my surroundings. They didn't just say like okay, you know, here's a lot of people. Aren't we impressive? Let's move on. Yeah. That- it's very much there for the sake of gameplay rather than just sheer spectacle or just show, showing off. As I know that it's not as impressive anymore these days because with a lot of like, it's still a, a lot of a re, yeah, a lot of with a lot of releases of Assassin's Creed always kind of toting about many multiple NPCs. It's it's kind of lost its spark a little bit. But with that with that aspect of blood money at the time was very much a innovative. Uh, feats at the time with just incorporating it into gameplay and, and, and changing your strategy than what you've been doing before that level even began and was completely unexpected for me in terms of like the in terms of the episodic nature of it i i it's i'm a little torn by it i can't really say i'm for it or against it i'm kind of very much in, uh, in the neutral aspect i i've for me i've always enjoyed i'm so used to it from the previous titles of just paying the full sixty dollars to get the full experience of all the levels and and hopefully it doesn't lose sight of what the previous titles were gonna going for which which is also was trying to tell a story and have a narrative as well. Mm-hmm. I hope that there's a narrative in this game because I do like the 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 lore of the series and oh, yeah. and the gameplay seems the gameplay I'm not worried about because it, it seems very rev- uh, relevant and very. Very much, uh, akin, yeah, can... very much akin to Blood Money. It's going, kind of going back to the fundamentals of Blood Money, and just that's kind of what we always wanted. And with the newer generation of consoles having already been released, with that, with that, you know, technology and power we have, uh, there's so much that they could do now, and so much creativity that can be had with such a, a wider scope. I know they've already been they talking about how what, that one of the levels we've already kind of been shown from the demos is already, is like. Maybe I think four or ten times bigger than one of the the biggest level they had compared to like one of the levels in Absolution, the Chinatown level. You thought that was big? That wish in itself was like ten times bigger than that. Oh man, they! Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that because I also you know that was probably one of my favorite levels of Absolution, the Chinatown level, because it was very reminiscent of the uh, of the best of uh, Blood Money, where it's like okay, you have a lot of ways to go about this. How are you going to do it? And uh, good luck. Yeah, it 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 could it can also mean like you said, and maybe that's just the thing. Screen X was trying, I guess, to lower their cost being for it being an episodic. I'm not a huge fan of it, but they they seem to have altered it a little bit because I remember prior to this announcement, it was gonna be, I think it was still gonna be episodic, but it would they they were gonna release like I think maybe three levels at at launch and you and it would ha- it would be like sixty dollars and they were they were having you pay sixty dollars up front and you won't and it's a Oof. very big gamble because you wouldn't know it, where where when you're going to be getting the rest of those missions and it and anything can happen i mean the, the company will go down or the developer will go down anything can happen it's like a, it's really a much very much a risk whether you think about it or uh-huh. not it's putting down sixty dollars and you're only getting like three levels as a, as a fan of uh, D4, trust me, uh, th- sometimes when they say season or, you know, Half-Life, uh, people who have been waiting for Half-Life uh, episode, uh, Half-Life 2 episode 3, don't rely on the season pass is always working. No, no, it could very much bite you in the butt as it, it's, it's kind of, it's happened a little bit, especially with just them withholding, withholding much, very much of the content and much of the game with, with season passes. It's not not the right way to go, but it seems now that they're that they've re re uh, altered that model now with the just the game with you just paying like a, a set amount per per episode uh, 
or whatever releases they're gonna put out for it. So it, you, you, it's so all, it's all right to buy whatever they put out at the time. So you you can you can either choose to buy buy it at sixty dollars or just buy it as per release. And then after a certain point, they'll just start putting out updates to update the levels. So we'll see how that goes. I just as long as it doesn't affect the gameplay and they at least consider at least uh, having some sort of uh, narrative in there I'll be I'll be all right with that uh, if not it's gonna feel very hollow for me I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy it as much but as the gameplay I will but just without having some kind of narrative I'm very much a narrative kind of game oh, yeah. kind of person that always loved me some narratives and I'd love to see what they can always do and explore with the character oh, of 47 so we'll have to see yeah it did uh, you know, I, I love um, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but I'm not replaying the multiplayer. It's uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's like a one and done. It's not like there are very few multiplayer games I'll go back to as and just like, oh hey, you know, I love this multiplayer game. I'll get a couple of buddies on over and we'll play this. It's usually just like, oh, let's either play the newest thing or our favorites. Not really the kind of guys that were mid tier and. Uh, I was thinking about, uh, you know, we were talking about NPCs and how it's not impressive that uh, Assassin's Creed has done it, but the difference, the big difference is that for, like, Unity, for instance, a lot of the uh, NPC dialogue or actions in the middle of the square, they're just like, okay, they're animations and stuff to look impressive and to look big, but they don't really add to the gameplay. They're, and unlike... Um, Unlike in Black Flag or in Assassin's Creed 2 or in a lot of the other games where they actually kind of served a purpose in terms of alerting guards or blending in, it, it's just very hard to actually find a, a good purpose for all these people in the actual game in Unity. Whereas in uh, Splinter's of Bl Blood Money or in Absolution, all these, ki all these uh, NPCs at the same time, they have a purpose. Well said, CH. I can't, couldn't put it any better myself, but um, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, Steve. Uh, and it's probably it's probably simplistic, maybe if you kind of think about it in, in the long run. Probably play it uh, when it's all out and binge play it. That's that's mm -hmm. probably how I would do it too. But I I gotta have my fix of Hitman. <laughs> you know, I can't I can't just not play it. It's much like and, and it's much like the effect of I cannot wait a week or a day or hours. To not see this Batman v Superman when it comes out. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, I, I'm not big in Batman v Superman, but uh, it's when it comes out, I'm gonna go see it because I, I love superhero movies and I just I just I can't I can't help myself. Hell yeah! I mean, it, it just for the sake of it's gonna be quite a spectacle, and I'm just I'm very excited because it's gonna be the kind of the first inkling of. One of my favorite stories is The Dark Knight Returns, and just seeing it, I never thought I would see The Dark Knight Returns inspired. Well, pretty much Dark Knight Returns costume in in the in the in a theatrical release. Mm -hmm. I never thought that happened. I know that my I, I know that my in my own dreams, my own dream casting would have been to to have Clint Eastwood be the older Bat, Bruce Wayne. That would have been I would have blew my socks off. But uh, that ain't gonna happen. But that's this is as close as we're gonna get. <laughs> Dark Knight uh, Returns inspired uh, costume finally on in the big screen and very much excited. Uh, I was very, very much interested to see how that goes. So hopefully it work, it works out well because that's that's going to be there pretty much the jumping off point leading into many mu many much of the, the of the other releases they're going to put out from DC, which is about time because they got a lot of good properties that they're not utilizing in the in the film mm -hmm. aspect of things. So I'm very excited to see that. Never want to see a, a movie fail. So I'm just because it's not going to be good for any of us, and especially the movie going audience. We want to yes. see a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, and the Batman voice modulator in full effect. <laughs> oh man, I, I I do wonder if that's going to be the new Halloween mask thing. Like if it, I, I know like Iron Man had the voice changing suit. I know. Uh, Kylo Ren and uh, Captain Phasma have their uh, have their voice changing masks. I wonder if they're going to sell the Batman voice changing masks. I, mean, I, I could see that maybe being uh, a trend, as like maybe how 
like you me- like you mentioned, just like the Iron Man voice modulator was going on and in the scream. It was mm-hmm. kinda like voice modulator was very big and people trying to emulate that like crazy. So everyone's gonna be touting Do you bleed? <laughs> well, you will, or I, or just like going up to like a a small child trying to le- learning the, her alphabet. It's like, do you read? You will. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, uh, I, there's still so much that we don't that we don't know about the film, and I feel like there's still some more things that they got under the sleeves. I I just hope that it doesn't overbear or. Mm-hmm. Uh, Take away from the movie having so much maybe maybe possible villains in the in the in the mix because that never worked out. And who knows maybe maybe we'll end find up end up finally getting, uh, Bizarro or <laughs> by played by Christopher Walken and, and voiced by Kevin Spacey. <laughs> All right, don't you give my hopes up because that's what I would love to see. <laughs> that would have been a oh, Brainiac when they said Bizarro. That's something else. Mm-hmm. Brainiac. That's that's from that documentary, the <laughs> Superman Lives, the Death of Superman. They, they, oh man, I I would have loved to have seen the George Miller Justice League movie. That you know after after uh, Mad Max Fury Road and seeing how that all came together, I'd love to see him take on a superhero movie. But you know he's probably not going to. He doesn't want to do any Mad Max films anymore. So I'm not sure if he really wants to do any more action films anymore. You know, he's already he's already a grandpa. He's he's got the he's got the right to retire and, and enjoy his life. Absolutely, that's all we that's all we uh that's all we strive for. You know, is to be able to work as hard as you can and and then play hard by retiring. That, that sounds about pretty darn well. Oh yeah. Um, but beyond that point, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if if you uh want to discuss anything else further. Ch, this has been a really pretty good podcast, right? Yeah. Uh, this very good episode here. I'm pretty... pra- practically discussing some of the, uh, the Oscars nominees here and whether we agree with it or not and we'll get into maybe more detail I don't, I don't think we really discuss it f- that much further but maybe who, what would we think would win but there are some there's some categories here and there we give our two cents on yeah oh yeah I think maybe maybe Mad Max Fury Road is kind of like that District 9 nomination where it's like it's not going to win you, it, because it's a genre film, but at least it's nice to be nominated. Yeah, it, it certainly it certainly is. I was, as I mentioned, very much surprised it was even in in the list that they even put it in there. But that's mm-hmm. a that's a credit to what's uh, the credit to the film, and kind of kind of glad to see them diversifying the best picture nominees rather than just keeping it as your typical maybe Hollywood kind of artsy fair and putting in putting those kind of movies up there. Mm-hmm. Beyond that point, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for uh, tuning in, and thanks so much, Tag, for uh, joining us for a little bit here. And Steve Rome, uh, it just off, just off the presses, just off the, the, uh, the actually, we, we were actually going live against uh, the BGB as well, because it was, oh. it was actually at, it was one of those timing situations that uh, we ended up recording it at this at this time. Just <laughs> it, it was just very hard for me, at, especially like the first, I think the second day of my job, I was like. I was so ex- I was so exhausted. I couldn't I couldn't uh, I couldn't record that podcast. So that's why we had to reschedule it. And I I wouldn't have put out the as good of performance as I would have if I if I did it on that day. So which is why we were recording today, and at the same time they were doing their show live as well. So <laughs> BGB versus Bloody Thumbs. It's gonna be Bloody Thumbs. Dawn it's... of Justice. <laughs> I'll put put a nice trailer together and and that song in there. It's gonna be like the new. Monday Night Wars with the the whole WWE versus WCW. It's gonna be with like that. Our logos on two different helmets, and, and then they just smack together. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like a football uh, head to head. Yeah, the football smashing against each other. And then we got the get get the Fox NFL robot CG robot that they've been using for like two decades. Yeah, and then, and then it just replaced that robot's head with CHS CHS head with the. <laughs> the blue eyeballs. Now all you got to do is make the robot overweight and uh, trying to de- deny his drinking problem. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, dark. Yeah, that turned dark. But anyway, <laughs> that, was a, that was a slight dark edge right there. But I I forgot to mention. I really appreciate uh, the the birthday gift you got me. Uh, oh, I, and I already I already thanked you for it before. But I 
really very much appreciated and was very much surprised that uh, you got me those uh, saga to add in my collection that I haven't read yet. I've been wanting I've been wanting to read it, but it's one of those things where I wanted to wait till the series was in was ending until I can kind of read it all in, in in a binge. I don't know if that's ever mm-hmm. going to happen, but I might as well just start reading it and then the. It sounds like they got a story planned out. Yeah, and then uh, we got uh, the Sandman. <laughs> to you podcast, you will. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, that that will be our that will be the tagline of the of the trailer if, if we have one against the BGB when we do these live simulcasts. We just need to make uh, we we need to make one where uh, a teaser trailer where Steve Rome is just looking up and you're looking down as, as you descend down. It's like dun 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 dun. dun. That was pretty. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, yeah, and also the Sandman Overture, which is uh, yeah, very very beautiful looking cover. I know that John, John H. Williams, I believe the name is, is is it the name? I got I gotta look at it. But he's always put always puts out some good artwork. I still have uh, I'm like halfway on like the first volume of the Sandman. I have like the big ass omnibus hardcover of the Sandman. So I'm mm-hmm. kind of taking my time with that I don't know if I sh- if it's one of those things where I should probably wait to read this first before I read this this other overture I think that's a prequel if I'm not mistaken I hear there's a lot of small references and shout outs to other things that happen in the story yeah so I'm probably just read the original run yeah J.H. William III thank you Stephen Rome he knows his stuff he's a very he's big in the comics as well I, um, yeah it's like it's the same thing the same Sentiments I would make too with like Twin Peaks. Like I, I would watch the show first before you watch the prequel movie, Fire Walk with Me, because that mm-hmm. that that spoils a lot. <laughs> that spoils like the emphasis of what the show is about. <laughs> it's like who murdered Laura Palmer, and and, and it's pretty it's revealed to you as a, a in the movie, which is made after the show, because it was pretty much like icing on the cake for fans who wanted to know maybe like the what happened before the show took place. Mm-hmm. So. There's that. I can't wait for the revival, and, and I'm sure Steve Rome is ex- very much excited. As as uh, I think I brought up to him and mentioned before in the last podcast about the X Files revival show. Yeah. That, that, that little I think it's like a mini series revival for a little Six bit. Six part. Six part. I heard the episode. The first episode wasn't too hot. They, they should have played it cool. They should have played it cool. <laughs> played it cool, like Chris Evans. And that. Oh my goodness! A good thing I wrote this down because I'm gonna watch it. Okay, I'm I I might have to watch that tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. Uh, I really am. Uh, that uh, I I think that might be the movie of the year, <laughs> regardless of the actual quality. <laughs> yeah, I'm very much excited, and uh, yeah, man, that's this has been this has been quite an episode. Really, really fun. Really, really, we delve deep into like the Oscar nominees. So I'm very much excited to watch the rest of these other movies that I haven't seen and kind of kind of give my overall consensus consensus and try to be kind of objective on maybe what I would consider mm-hmm. to be the best out of all these films so um, I like doing that it's always fun um, seeing who wins and watching some of the and also watch good movies at the same time so you can't you can't beat that yeah I'm also probably gonna be uh, running a betting ring on uh, <laughs> uh, like I'm, I'm gonna be the bookie for a lot of people this this uh, coming up Oscars if you want if I want in uh, tweet us at Splinter 47 <laughs> at CHGAR we got some big bucks forget the forget the Powerball this is gonna be the big event right here Five, 58 trillion dollars come on people with the uh, as as CH puts his pinky to his near his, near his mouth <laughs> Dr. Five Eagle style million dollars but yeah, yeah. I mean, sh- uh, that's about it, folks. Uh, shout out to the Jägermeister and shout out to the Crystal Crystal Head Vodka. Good, some good shit right there. Oh yeah, I've been I've been on, I've been casually drinking uh, these last uh, couple months. I've been enjoying them. I've been, I, I I've talked about this before. It's like I don't know if this is just the the maybe the materialistic part of me. Like I I like. I like alcohol, but not not as much to the point where I'm I'm an alcoholic. But I love <laughs> you're I love, missing out, man. <laughs> I love buying I love buying alcohol for the sake of the bottles. The bottles are always so wonderfully crafted. 
Oh yeah, they always got some good. It's just for collect collection and like display purposes. Like this, you know, this the one that Dan Aykroyd always promotes today, Crystal Head Vodka. I feel like I'm like Indiana Jones, not the good <laughs> Indiana Jones movie, but it was a good, it was a cool looking skull, Crystal Crystal Head Vodka. Hell yeah, do you tr- whenever you take it out of uh, the cabinet, do you just like have like a that uh, sack of sand that you try to like quickly replace <laughs> at the last second? That's what you got to do. I mean, if you don't want to get squished by by those rocks, those boulders, you know. <laughs> it's like why did we why did we pay for this feature? It's insane, but it's it's not it's pretty good. It does, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of vodka because it always. I never like that aftertaste and alcohol where it, it, it tastes like you're drinking nail polish. I'm more of the sweet tasting kind of alcohol person, like maybe like the maybe like the apple, the, ang- the angry orchard. I think mm. that's the brand, and then I'm also about like maybe the Har- Mike's Hard Lemonade. Sometimes that's a little bit too sweet for me. I can, so sweet to the point where I can't even taste the alcohol at some point. So I want a little bit of that and a little you don't bit want of sweet. Store. I want a little bit of sweet too. So Crystal Skull doesn't does it does not have the taste aftertaste of nail polish, and but it's actually it hits the spot quite nice when you take some couple sips. I feel right. like I'm trying. I feel like I could have a, a podcast on alcohol <laughs> at this point. <laughs> The drunk tank. <laughs> That's what we call it. The drunk cast. <laughs> playing a cool cast. Play, playing it cool. That's 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 what I do. You know, I have the I have that uh, that feature. I I have the sand in my hand, and I'm about to grab the skull real quick, and I just gotta play it cool. <laughs> gotta play it cool. <laughs> so. Yet again, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Steve Rome. Thank you, Tag, and thank you. Very more specially to the fine folks listening to us on the archives when you mm-hmm. don't get the chance to check us out live. And very much thank you to CH for making it out tonight. Hey, my, my pleasure. Thank you for being an excellent host, man. Uh, check us out on iTunes. We got our website up. Um, we're going to have some interesting stuff going up soon, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, and uh, I hope you all have a wonderful night. That's all I got on my end. Yeah, so I'll, I'll love to say the same as well. Check us out on the com. Check us out mainly on the Bloody Thumbs Podcast dot com, and 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 tune in. Um, we're planning on getting together a new sip of non boba, talking about more of the Oscar nominees, and we're gonna kind of have our own little our own little discussion and kind of contest. We're gonna play me and Cat are gonna play together and uh, see who gets them. Get the right gets the most rights in terms of like what what wins uh, for these uh, Oscar nominees uh, for the Oscar season. So, gonna be queuing up some of these movies over the weekend since I have a three day weekend. I'm gonna have plenty of time to kind of binge watch some of these uh, nominee movies, and um, I'm very excited to talk about it very soon and and play cool, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Playing it cool. I don't think that's ever going away. <laughs> it's not going to go away. It's going to be the tagline every episode. So, uh, good night, Steve Arum. Good night, Steve Arum. And good night to you, everybody. Thank you so much for listening mm-hmm. to episode 176. I am Spooner47 signing off and play it cool. I am CH Gorog, not as cool, but still trying to play in it as. So, good night. <laughs> <laughs>